Hello, this is Manhattan Knight for singlementors.com. Just wanted to go over a hand that um, a student of ours just played. Um, he is Jack Nine, and the action is um, um, flat uh, limp to him on the bottom. So, usually when a player limps to me, I'm immediately thinking I should shove. So, that's my first thought. What um, in this hand it is uh, 1850 in the pot. Um, almost 20%, almost 15% of his stack is in the pot. But he's a little bit too big. So now I think, you know, maybe he should just raise it to like uh, 1850 in the pot. So about a pot size raise, maybe to raise it to 1850 to 2000 here. Um, and I think we get folds a huge amount of the time from a button limper who has some chips, who has 30 big blinds. So first right there, I think it's sort of a mistake that he makes. Um, then... He doesn't do this. He flats, um, which I guess is okay with a hand with a connected hand like this. You know, you're only looking for very specific flops, so I guess it's okay. Um, it's not like the worst, but I'd rather like get it heads up and isolate him out. So my way of playing it, I probably raise it. Um, if I have ten thousand chips, I probably shove it. Um, Eight thousand chips, I'm definitely shoving it. So it's just a little bit subtle, but um, that's okay. So he limps, which is, I guess, okay. It's better than folding a hand like Jack-9. Um, but it's sort of not great. Um, he gets a great flop for himself. Um, now, th this uh, obviously, this is a good flop. So I think leading here with a very coordinated board is okay. We don't want a player sort of... We don't want limped around and a player having got shot on us um, with a queen or a... a 10, which this guy is likely to have, or it's at least in his range. There's also a king up there, so he could have been limping a hand. Um, you know, is he limping king-queen or queen-jack? Maybe queen-jack. Maybe he's limping king-queen if he's really a loose limper. Um, to me, I'm, sh I'm opening, you know, well, I'm opening on the button such a wide range that, um, like, if he had min-raise, I think it's a much easier shove with jack nine um, than against the limper. In a way, because there's, more, there's going to be 600 more in the pot. So the pot would have been 2,400, so it's actually closer to 20% of our stack. So here, you know, I would lead. He does lead. He leads about a little less than half pot, which I think is good. It's going to, I, it's, it's going to fold out. Um, it won't fold out necessarily um, a 10, but it probably it could fold out a 10 from him. Um, and it's only it's going to get called by you know decent hands or shoved on. If we're shoved on here, we're obviously very happy. So he says to me, "This is what the worst card in the deck for us, right? Or is it? You know, we don't know. I mean, I think it's not a good card." But he said to me in his notes on the hand that he didn't think that this player could have. Um, uh, um, a queen. So, and he was only going to call one street. If the guy had double battled the river, he was going to um, fold. So he checks, which is, I don't know, you know, it's okay. I mean, that's a tough card. And it's also a good check to induce a lot of bluffing. And this guy bets. Now, is he ever going to bet a queen? If we had had a queen here, would have we bet? No, we're going to check, right? We're going to check pretty much 100% of the time when we have a queen. Is he ever going to bet with a queen? Let's say he had a hand like king-queen. Is he really going to bet here? I mean, isn't he going to get folds almost 100% of the time if he bets? Isn't he going to bet instead on the river? Um, maybe induce a bluff from us? So to me, this is the perfect board... The perfect hand to be shoving here. That if we're not gonna if, if we don't put him on the queen, what can we get him to fold? We can get him to fold here pretty much any hand that hit here, probably even a set. Let's say he had, let's say he had tens on the flop. Would he fold a set of tens right now? Probably. So we have a tremendous amount of fold equity on him. We can absolutely represent the queen because if we had the queen in our hand, we would play it exactly this way. We would check the turn and check shove if he bets. 
Um, we might flat, but we would probably check shove if he bets. This is the perfect card for our hand to roll off the deck. And uh, this is where I think he played it wrong and lost the hand. He just flats and... Uh, now you'll see my way of playing it, if I had raised a pre, the money would have gone in on the flop and we will lost the hand. Because he happens to have king nine. He has one of the few hands that... He has a hand that would have folded. He has a hand that probably folds pre, but if he doesn't fold pre, it's one of the few hands that stacks us um, on the flop because the money would have gotten in on the flop. So, anyway, if you see a board like that, think it through. Don't just flat the turn. Think, is he betting that turn if he has a queen? And I think he's never betting the turn. And the only hands that he might call a shove with are king nine of diamonds, which he can't have, jack nine of diamonds, which he can't have. So I guess he could have jack, he can't have jack ten of diamonds. Basically, he can't have diamonds here, right? Because all the two pair diamond hands that he could have fold the flop. I guess a, some loose player might call with an ace, um, x of diamonds, but you're ahead of that hand anyway. Like an ace nine, well, ace jack of diamonds, maybe, let's say. But you're ahead of that hand anyway, if he had ace jack of diamonds. And he would have raised a pre anyway. So maybe he could have ace x of diamonds, ace eight of diamonds. But he folds that on the flop. So there's no hand here that he could have. So basically I did this video as a study in board reading and and how I think he just misplayed his hand, not because he didn't have, you know, he had a good hand, but because he didn't take it to the second level of thinking about the hand. And if you take this hand to the second level of thinking about the hand, it's a very easy um, check shove on the turn. Um, and you're representing exactly what you have, which is a queen. And he can't call because there's no combination of cards there, except maybe a set of tens, or I, I, he can't have jacks or nines. So he raises them both. He, he even raises tens prey. There's no hand that he can have there and he's never betting a queen. So it's, it's just a lesson in in really just what how you should board read, basically texture read a board. And it just was a very easy shove for him to make. Anyway, this is Manhattan Night for Single Mentors. I think we have um, one of the great video libraries now. We have almost 300 videos. Um, excerpts like this one I don't do of every video. But I went into this hand equally as in depth in the complete hand history. Um, as I'm doing here, and uh, I just think it's one of the things that really makes our site stand out from others in both a coaching and training website, and in the future, hopefully, we're going to run it as a subscription website, and I think that um, we will turn a lot of players into monster players that way. Um, so, anyway, ManhattanNightForSingleMentors.com, um, sign up, um, join, ask for a stake, and uh, talk to you all later.